Hello and welcome to the fourth PicSight tutorial for SAS members. In this tutorial we're going to look at intensity transformation. What this does is take the image from being a linear, very dark image to a non-linear image where the detail is visible as would be in a normal photograph. I call this the initial stretch because it's important to understand that we are not looking anywhere near a final image. What we're looking to do is take the image from being linear to non-linear. It's important when we do the initial stretch that we do not clip bright areas. That is areas such as stars or galaxy cores should not be stretched to the point at which they are saturated as data will then be lost. You should also realize that an initially stretched image has low contrast and muted colors. This is normal and PI has the tools to improve the image. Now the processes we've applied so far have given us the best linear image to stretch. So gradients have been removed, colours have been calibrated and high frequency noise has been reduced. It's important not to skip these processes or any problems will be amplified by stretching the image. The tools to enable you to stretch the image are contained within process intensity transformations. There are a number of tools to, to achieve the initial stretch. These tools include histogram transformation, which is really the workhorse for stretching linear images, mast stretch, arc sign stretch, and a new process called generalized hyperbolic stretch. Uh, if you want to learn about this one, uh, watch the Paulie Mann Astro YouTube videos uh, for how to use it. He's done uh, two now, I think, very good uh, tutorials. There's no point in me repeating them because uh, it takes a lot of time and uh, his are excellent. So each of these uh, processes has its strength and uh, are appropriate to certain targets. Uh, it's important that you take your limit, uh, your, sorry, your linear images and experiment uh, with the intensity process to see which suit your particular image and workflow. Generally, I use histogram transformation and mast stretch for the majority of my images. Starting with histogram transformation, this can be found under process, intensity transformation, histogram transformation. You also need to open the screen transfer function process, which can be found under process, intensity transformation, screen transfer function. Here you can see the screen transfer function process window, the histogram transformation process window and also the real-time preview window which is part of histogram transformation. I've highlighted uh, a certain uh, number of the uh, important buttons, one being the radioactive sign which is the auto stretch button. This will provide an auto stretch of your image. Within the histogram transformation window you can see the top graph which is the output histogram meaning this shows the histogram for the process you have applied. The input histogram is the histogram for the linear image and this is the one where you make changes. You can see at the bottom there is a curve which is what's been applied by the auto stretch and then you have some small triangles which you may be able to see and that is the shadows and midtones slider. 
There will be a more detailed uh, explanation in the following videos. Start by going to Process, Intensity Transformations, Screen Transfer Function. Here's the process window, hit reset in the bottom right. As you can see we've got the R, G, B and L channels. Now this little box in the top left links the channel. The plus button allows you to zoom in, the minus button to zoom back out again. The little radioactive button provides an auto stretch of your image and it's good to use this to get the initial stretch. The three buttons on the right hand side will show you your black point, your mid tones and your white point readout. Now we go to process, intensity transformations, histogram transformation and here's the window. Again, reset in the bottom right. Here on the top you have your output histogram, which shows the effect of the stretch. Here's the input, which shows the histogram for the linear image. Here you will uh, pick your image that you're actually doing the stretch to, and here you see the shadows clipping, the highlights clipping, and the midtones balance. I will now demonstrate on an actual image. So here we've got an M81 linear image and uh, we're going to do the histogram stretch on this image. We've got our screen transfer function and histogram transformation open. So the first thing we need to do is to hit the auto stretch to basically see what our image looks like in its non-linear form. That is a reasonable uh, auto stretch. You can see the background's not too bright. The stars are not oversaturated. If you want to change your readout mode, which you should really click on this little button at the bottom, go to readout data and change it to RGB plus luminance. Now we can see the, the red, green and blue and the luminance levels. So now let's have a look at the screen transfer function in detail. If we press the blue magnifier, we can then zoom in on the hist histogram, the screen transfer function, and see that the same stretch has been applied to all three of the RGB channels. You can then zoom back in again or out, depending on your point of view, with the minus sign. We now need to transfer this stretch to histogram transformation, and we do this by grabbing the little blue triangle, dragging it across to histogram transform bottom bar, and letting go. We then select the image, and now we can see we have an input and an output histogram. We're now finished with the STF. We also need to reset the STF on the image. We now operate the real time preview button and that shows us the result of the STF now baked into histogram transformation. We can see that the shadows is clipping a lot of pixels. It's over 90,000. That's too many that have gone to black. So we grab this little shadow slider and we move it to the left and reduce that down to around 1,000. 1,500 is, uh, is acceptable on a 20 megapixel sensor. But you can see that the background's been brightened because they move together. So we now move the midtone slider to the right, darken down the background and that's looking quite good. 
use this little button to zoom in to a selected area and inspect that. So we can see here our core isn't saturated and we've still got good detail in the spiral arms. Don't worry about the lack of colour or contrast at the moment, that's normal. Once we are happy we can bake the uh, stretch in by hitting the apply button. We now close the real time preview. We re sorry, we see reset the process, close the window. And there we have our stretched image. Change the image identifier to something that you'll recognize because this is now a non-linear image. And there we are. Let's have a look at the histograms to see what the stretch has done to the image. You can see we've got a nice output histogram here. We can have a look at the individual channels. First of all we need to reset our zoom back to 1. because so Obviously we've stretched the image now and there you can see we've got a red peak. We now look at the green and the blue and see that they all line up really nicely which means we've got a well colour balanced image. Return to RGBK and there you have the histogram. We will now move on to master stretch. Uh, this is an, an initial stretch that's suitable for uh, bright galaxies, also things like the Orion Nebula, and I use it on uh, on other nebula as well. It's very good at uh, giving a good stretch of dim areas without uh, saturating cores of galaxies or the stars within a nebula. It works by carrying out a series of small stretches with a mask being applied at each stretch. As the intensities within the image increase, so does the strength of the mask. It is very processor in intensive, so uh, the, the parameters you're going to use, because it does need tuning, should be worked out on previews and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it tends to give a flat image uh, which lacks contrast but uh, very good protection of highlights and uh, development of low signal areas and the contrast and uh, any necessary saturation can be dealt with uh, later on in the process. I will now demonstrate the mass stretch. We start by going to process, intensity transformations, mass stretch. Here's the process window. We look at the target background, we'll leave that as it is. In terms of the iterations, I normally start at around 150. Uh, you need to pick a background reference, and the way to do this is to put an STF onto your image, zoom into it, and then choose an area of neutral background without any stars. You create a preview by hitting function alt n and then you draw a preview box onto the screen again avoiding any stars so that's our preview one that will be our background reference we go to the little folder icon and we select preview one okay we now want to choose a, a region of interest as i said we use previews to check how well this is working function alt new again and then draw a box on the screen that includes the areas you're most interested in here we've got the core and the dust lanes click region of interest and then from preview select preview 2 click OK we're now ready to go cancel all of the screen transfer functions in both the main image and the previews
We can now apply the process by dragging the blue triangle onto the image and letting the process run. As you can see on here, it's not a particularly fast process. Here we are coming towards the end and the stretch has been done onto the preview. And as you can see, it's a nice stretch. We've got a nice uh, point source core for Andromeda. We've got some nice detail in the dust lanes and we've got a good neutral background. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Now we go to the full image. We're going to reset the mask stretch. You don't need to do that, but it's safe to do it. And basically take the whole image and then apply the process to it. You'll now see how slow it is. And mine's a reasonably fast machine. Anyway, you don't have to look at uh, the whole process uh, console. There we go, 99. And the process is applied. And in my view, that's a really nice stretch. We've got some good detail uh, in the galaxy and we haven't uh, oversaturated the core or any of the stars. Here's a close-up uh, of the stretched image. I can show you uh, what's going on. There's a nice uh, point source for the core. If we zoom in, there's good details in the dust lanes around the core. And also the stars are not oversaturated. So overall, that is a very good stretch. If we look towards the edges, we can see some of the blue oxygen in the outer rings of the galaxy. Okay, this next slide shows a comparison between the result from the mass stretch and the result of a normal screen transfer function that would be used in histogram transformation. And as you can see, there's a very large difference between the two. The core in the histogram transfer is much brighter and there's probably a loss of detail in there, or it would be rather difficult to get that detail back, whereas in the mass stretch version, the core is nice and tight. So for this sort of uh, target, the mass stretch has worked extremely well. Now that completes this tutorial on, uh, on the initial stretch. There are other processes, as I've said. Have a play with them, see what suits you. Have a look at the Pauli Mann Astro videos for the GHS Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at masks, which are a very important part of the further development of the image towards a final picture. I hope you've enjoyed this video.